I'm sitting today with Gidon Novik, a co-founder of Lyft, an airline in South Africa, and thank you for visiting with me and having a little conversation with me in this library that we found. Thank you. Um, Gidon, your family goes back a long way in South Africa's commercial aviation. Kome was uh, obviously a big part of your family's history, and now that's gone defunct. Any pangs of, uh, of regret for your family? Yeah, it was sad to see it go. My father spent two-thirds of his life in the business. It was his only, only work, really, that you know, only business he was ever involved with. Um, so it was sad to see it go. My father passed away three years ago. And, um, yeah, it was, it was sad on the one hand. On the other hand, you know, companies come and go and sometimes, you know, reach a point where, you know, the model and the environment has moved on to somewhere else. And uh, I suppose that's the, the cycle of life and the cycle of business. Right. So that kind of backs us into where we are now. Um, obviously, you've got your startup airline that's been running nicely, I hope. Um, from what I hear, how do you see the market conditions now? Com is gone. That's roughly forty percent of the industry capacity, which is a huge amount. You also have SAA. That is, the, I suppose now is a bit what we would call the rump of what was formerly the SAA. How do you see the the market now? Well, a lot of it depends on the fuel price. I mean, that um, has a direct impact impact on ticket prices. And at the levels that we see now is, you know, very restrictive on demand. You know, we, we have a largely price sensitive market and, um, you know, there's, there's just going to be a smaller traveling market. So I think, you know, one of the challenges that Kame had was just overcapacity. There were too many seats. Right. They, were, they were providing a big chunk of the overcapacity. But, you know, there's a normalization. There will be capacity added. We will add capacity. Others will too. But, um, you know, it's certainly not a, a bullish market. You know, right. we're still coming out of COVID. You know, encouraging signs on leisure travel. Business travel is still a question. You know, globally, I think it's still a question. That, right. you know, certainly people are traveling for business again, but are they going to travel as frequently? Probably not. So I think there's a lot that needs to play itself out before we get to the point of saying, you know. When we look at that 40% gap, how much of that gap needs to be closed so that everybody still makes a living. Well, that's the thing. You know, overcapacity kills the industry. It's just the you know the cycle that we seem to continuously be caught by. You know, just you know, adding too much capacity <coughs> too soon when things are looking good comes back to bite inevitably. Right. So the right model, in my view, is to have you know a level of capacity that um, that caters for the you know average demand throughout the year we have seasonality as well as major cycles in our industry mm -hmm. and when the peaks come you know these prices are going to go up and this right. and but but to think of catering you know setting capacity at peak levels is not not very right, of uh, course not very sensible now it used to be when Kame was still flying that Cape Town Johannesburg Johannesburg Cape Town was the 11th busiest city pair in the world which is staggering to think about where we are geographically, yeah, at the bottom end of Africa, and that there was so much traffic, which of course it backs into your comment about excess capacity. The only way to grow an airline is to go north. What do you, how do you see that? I mean, your airline is focused on that one market, Cape Town, Johannesburg. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we will have other domestic routes in time. I think it's that's inevitable. Um, Joba Cape Town's appealing not only you know, in terms of its size, but you know, it's got a fantastic mix of, of customers. You've got um, local friends and relative traffic, local leisure, local business, international travelers coming back into, uh, into the country and particularly Cape Town. So it's a robust market. And right. it's certainly, you know, our thinking is it's the most competitive market probably in Africa as a, as a city pair. And if we can do really well in, a, in such a highly competitive environment, then we feel that the model will be robust enough to take elsewhere. Right. It's interesting, Cape Town, the city of Cape Town has now decided to become 
very proactive in marketing itself as an international destination. So you've got West Grove, yeah. you've got uh, you've got this um, strong involvement to attract airline traffic here, which is great because Cape Town is magnificent to visit. Um, we see something interesting that Cape Town's or yeah, Cape Town now has more American travelers than they used to have from Europe. That was an amazing turn out of the COVID crisis. What do you think happened there? Well, I mean, you know, I'm biased because I live in Cape Town and I think it's the most magnificent city in the world. Um, and I think people are discovering Cape Town um, and other parts of the country, but Cape Town is a you know, globally competitive tourist destination that just offers so much. You know, we, we have a weak currency, so it's hell of a affordable to, to be here. And I think we've undermarketed ourselves over the years. West Grove are doing a phenomenal job of getting the, the, the access into South Africa from, uh, from uh, international destinations. Right. And uh, I, I, I'm very bullish on, on that continuing in the right. future. Um, Lufthansa is back here again. British Airways is back here. Yeah. I think Virgin is seasonally back again. Also, yeah. The, the, the Middle Delta East. Delta United. Right, yeah. well, Delta's not in Cape Town yet, right? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm watching that one. Sure. Um, the uh, I think Qatar and Emirates are back here again. Yeah. I'm just thinking, who are the other big... Ethiopian is still um, here daily. KLM. KLM is there KLM daily. KLM is in here. Um, Turkish. Right. Ethiopian are. Right. Very good. Ro is Rwanda here back? Yes. So all, I mean, all that traffic that's coming into Cape Town, the kind of stuff that you're talking about, that then say you can take them to Johannesburg, where they can connect connect to the same airlines yeah. traffic, you know, because of, of, of both markets. I'm very interested to see that um, there's a new airport being developed in Luanda, and it's always intrigued me that the, the Angolans could be a good kickoff point to the south, southern part of the United States or even South America. But that never seems to have worked here. Interesting. Yeah, geographically that kind of makes sense. Right. But from what I understand, they have issues you know, getting FAA certification. In terms of looking north, I know that Nigeria is a huge market, Kenya is a huge market. Where else in Africa do, do the South African airlines look for traffic growth? Well, we're always looking north. And you know that's the only place we can look really, other right. than going east to Mauritius. Right. So um, you know, and you know, it's highly regulated. Um, it's you know, a lot of routes are very tightly protected. So it's not an easy rollout strategy to right. you know just kind of roll out a pan African strategy. But we see opportunity. You know, there's there's obvious um, um, examples of highly successful airlines in Africa, Ethiopian, you know, being the um, the case study really of running a, a scale airline on the continent. Uh, we see opportunity with a lot of the smaller operators who still require access in and out of their countries or even within their countries but lack the skills, lack the infrastructure um, and um, the talent. And, and the talent. And we've got, you know, so much of that sits here in South Africa. And you know, one of our aspirations is to build a capability that can help these airlines who are subscale uh, compete in their uh, in their local environments. Last item that I want to talk to you about: South African Airways. Um, they're trying to come back now. The news this morning is that the the buyers seem to have second. Uh, I guess they have questions. Um, does the government still give? access exclusively to SAA to all these foreign markets or are they opening up those slots let's say to other operators like yourselves? So so I mean you know just to declare what you're aware of we are minority partners in the consortium that's aspiring to purchase 51% of SAA. At this stage we not you know we're not involved in the management or you know not, it's not part of the plan although we've offered to assist any way that we can. Um, and you know, it's, it's SAA right now is a very small airline, and the markets, you know, changed dramatically since they went into business rescue a few years ago. And even at that point, they had, you know, become a much smaller airline compared to what they were. Actually, at, at their peak, I think they had 45 aircraft. So it was a, it was a, you know, significant uh, player in the market. But the environment's changed. So I think to be competitive. Our view is that it will need to be super efficient, 
you know, certainly on um, on the short and medium haul, you know, efficiency is, is critical. And, um, you know, there's a lot of work to be done. It's not, you know, I don't think anyone's expecting SAA to magi magically come back. Are they, you know, protected? I, I, I'm, I'm optimistic that that our government will take a view that, you know, we need, we need competition, we need strong com competitors. I think the old thinking of, you know, lots of competitors is being challenged. You, you want sustainable competition, which if you look at developed markets in the world, like Australia, for example, you have two or three strong, sustainable competitors who can robustly compete in a market, as opposed to, you know, players coming in that are, you know, uh, undercapitalized, have the wrong, you know, the wrong cost model, don't build a brand, don't build, build loyalty with their customers, and, and eventually go out of business. Thank you so much. Thank you.